Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In the previous videos, we introduced the concepts of asymmetric carbons or stereogenic carbons and molecules that leads to asymmetry in molecules and creates stereoisomers when you look at their mirror images. They are different. And in order to distinguish those different stereoisomers, we need to have a naming system which clearly indicates the configuration of those stereogenic carbons. Fortunately, we have some rules that allows us to do this, and that's based on the kahn ingold prelog priorities that we used for determining E and Z selectivity in double bond. We call this the R and S configuration because R is the Latin for rectus or right, and S is the Latin for, for left or sinister. If we take this molecule 2-chlorobutane, this has one stereogenic carbon in it indicated at the carbon where the chlorine is attached. That carbon has four different groups. And its mirror image isomer also has a carbon with four different groups. And you've noticed one I've labeled as S and one I've labeled as R. This refers to the direction of rotation when you go from the highest priority towards the lowest priority where you always point the lowest priority of the four groups away from you. So in this case, if we take a look at using our kahn ingold prelog priorities that's based on atomic number, we can see that we have a chlorine as the highest priority group, a hydrogen on this carbon, which is the lowest priority group, or number four. And if we rank all of these in order, we have a CH3, a carbon here, and a CH2, CH3, so in this case, we have two carbons we're comparing, so we need to go out a little bit further to determine the priorities. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens, whereas this carbon on the left is attached to two hydrogens and one carbon. So this gets the priorities. That's why this is number two and this is number three. So if we take a look at those groups and we go from number one to number two to number three, we're going in a counterclockwise direction. Again, the lowest priority group, in this case hydrogen, is going away from us and pointing towards the back. That is the direction of your view that you have to take when you're determining R and S, with the lowest priority group going to the back. Whereas the other enantiomer, or the other mirror image, we have the same priority groups, one, two, three and four. Hydrogen is pointing away from us and in this case to go from highest to lowest we're going in a clockwise direction or going to the right. Right for rectus which is what we indicate here in front of the name. So this would be the S2 chlorobutane on the left and the R2 chlorobutane on the right. Keep in mind that I've drawn these in an ideal way so that you can easily see the lowest group going away. But what would happen for example if I draw it like this where the hydrogen is in the plane of the board or if I draw it like this where the hydrogen is up and the chlorine is down. Well we still have the same priority group so for example one, two, three, and four but if you look at this you're going from one to two to three it's going counterclockwise however the hydrogen is on the wrong side so you can either try to envision this looking at this from the back side, or simply flip it over. If you can flip it over in your mind, that's great. Um, and then you can just take the opposite of what you see. So if it's going counterclockwise with the lowest priority group coming towards us, then you take the opposite and it would be the R isomer, not the S isomer. This one's a little bit more difficult to see when your lowest priority group is in the plane of the paper, because you have to envision this from this direction looking down here. So one, to two to three and it's going essentially back and then forward so from your viewpoint you're going counterclockwise so this is the S direction there is a little bit easier way to look at this the molecules regardless of how it's written on the paper and you use your hand and point your thumb towards the direction of the lowest priority group no matter where it's pointing. If it's pointing up you point your thumb straight up towards you. If it's pointing back you point your thumb straight back away from you. If it's in the plane of the board you point your thumb down to the left or down to the right or up to the left wherever that hydrogen or the lowest priority group is pointing on the paper. And then the rest of the molecule is the direction your hand curves. So your hand should curve in the direction of highest to lowest priority. So on the left you can see here if your lowest priority group is the hydrogen 
you need to use your left hand, point your thumb away from you, and curve your hand from chlorine to ethyl to methyl, one to two to three. You need your left hand to do that, not your right hand. So if it's your left hand, it would be sinister or S. And if you use your right hand, such as in the compound on the right, it's R for rectus or right. Well, here's an example of a molecule with two stereogenic centers. And I want to focus in, actually, on those two stereogenic centers. The rest of the molecule is a little bit less relevant. But if we just look here, we can determine the configuration for each of these centers. So let's first take a look at the carbon attached to the nitrogen. And the way to start with this is to always draw in your hydrogens if the hydrogens aren't drawn. So in this case, we have a molecule where two of the bonds are in the plane of the board. The nitrogen is going to the back, and so the bond that's left has to be coming out towards us, and that's where our hydrogen is. It's coming out towards you from the plane of the board. I never want to see anyone draw this away from the angle of the bond this way, because that looks really bad, and that gives the wrong viewpoint for this. That is not a tetrahedral representation at all. The proper way to do this is to have two of the bonds in the plane of the board, and the direction of that angle is the direction of your other bonds. So notice nitrogen going to the back. The hydrogen has to be coming out forward from that point of that bond angle. So that's where the hydrogen has to be. So let me clean this up a little bit, draw that a little bit better, and then we'll take a look at the priority. So in this case, we have four different groups attached to that central carbon. We have a nitrogen, a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. And I hope it's pretty obvious that the hydrogen is going to be the lowest priority group, number four. The nitrogen is going to be the highest priority group. It has the highest atomic number of all those four groups. Now what we have to determine are the two carbons next to it, and what are the priorities there? Well, this carbon is attached to two hydrogens and one oxygen. Whereas this carbon is attached to one hydrogen, one oxygen, and one more carbon. So right there, we see oxygens cancel out, hydrogens cancel out, and the difference is carbon versus hydrogen. Carbon having the higher atomic number makes this group higher priority than this group. So then our priorities are uh, one for nitrogen, two for this group, three for this group, and four for the hydrogen. Now again, the lowest priority group is not pointing back away from us, it's pointing towards us. So if we look at going from one to two to three, it's going clockwise from the viewpoint that we're looking at. But if we were to look at this from the back side, it would be counterclockwise from our frame of reference. Or if you point your thumb straight towards you, you need your left hand to curve in the direction of one to two to three, not your right hand. For the carbon with the nitrogen attached to it, the configuration is S. Let's take a look at the other carbon. In this case, we have oxygen, carbon, carbon, and again, the hydrogen, which is not written. If the oxygen is coming out towards us, that means the hydrogen must be going back away from us, so I'll use a dashed line. And notice again, from the angle of the two bonds, it's pointing down away from that angle point. So again, the priorities would be one for oxygen, and hydrogen would be the lowest, and then we have to figure out the priorities for each of these. And remember how we imagine the priorities for a double bond. So this double bond you can think about as being attached to a carbon in this direction and another carbon in that direction. So what we want to do is break that bond and envision it like this. So if we take a look at this carbon on the right, we have a carbon which is attached to one carbon, two carbons, and a hydrogen. And the carbon on the left is attached to a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon, and a nitrogen. Right there we have the highest priority group of the nitrogen, so that would take precedence. So this has a higher priority than this. So our priorities now are one for oxygen, two for this group, three for this group, and four for the hydrogen. So in this case, we're going clockwise from one to two to three. The hydrogen is pointing to the back, so that's the R configuration. So this molecule has, on the number two carbon, the S configuration, and on the number three carbon, the R configuration. Here's another example of molecules with stereogenic carbons. These happen to be examples of amino acids, which are the makeup of proteins. And you can see on this molecule on the left, we have one carbon here. The hydrogen that's unwritten is coming out towards us, so I'll put that in for clarity. And then we can take a look at the priorities. So we have nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and carbon. The nitrogen will have the highest priority. The hydrogen will have the lowest priority. This carbon attached to the more oxygens would be the second priority. 
and the CH3 would be third priority. Again, looking at that, this carbon is attached to oxygens, whereas this carbon is attached just to hydrogens. So in this case, counterclockwise, if you're looking at it from the back, remember the hydrogen's coming up towards us, so we need to think about the opposite of what it looks like from our view, and that would be the S configuration. In the other molecule here, hydrogen is going back, and the priorities are going to be one for the nitrogen, two for the carbon attached to oxygens, three for the carbon attached to only carbons and hydrogens, and four for the hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to the back, so that's also going counterclockwise, so that is the S configuration as well. The glucose molecule is a little bit more difficult. This has five different stereogenic carbons on it, and we need to determine the configurations for all of them. So let's look at the first carbon on the top. The hydrogen that's not written is going to the back, we can assign our priorities now. We have hydrogen, carbon, carbon, oxygen. Oxygen will be one. The carbon on the bottom left will be number two because that's attached to additional carbons, whereas the carbon on the top is only attached to one oxygen and two hydrogens. If you want more clarity, this carbon is attached to two hydrogens and an oxygen, whereas the carbon here is attached to one hydrogen, one oxygen, and one carbon. So with the priorities identified going from one to two to three and hydrogen going to the back, we're going clockwise. So that would be the R configuration for that atom. And if you do this configurational determination for all of the carbons on here that are stereogenic, what you'll see is that the molecule has these configurations. This is a little bit complicated and I won't be giving you quite as complicated molecules to determine RNS for. This gets a little bit involved in trying to go out very far to, to determine priorities, which can be a little bit difficult.